Researchers are warning that as more and more consumers choose to switch to electric vehicles, better methods of recycling their batteries are urgently needed to prevent a mountain of waste. One million EVs sold around the world in 2017, including 546 here, up from 63 in 2016. In September this year, 605 electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles were sold in New Zealand. Uh, researchers at the University of Birmingham say that while that when the batteries from the 2017 fleet begin to wear down in about 20 years, they'll create 250,000 tonnes of waste, and that's just from that one year. The study's lead author, Gavin Harper, is a Faraday Institution Research Fellow at the Relib Project at the University of Birmingham. He says rapid uptake of EVs, is necessary to lower carbon emissions, but we need to anticipate the waste management issue now. Gavin, thank you very much for being with us. Hello, good morning to you. So 250,000 tonnes of waste just from the 2017 vehicle fleet, and we expect the trajectory for EV uptake to, to, to take off, don't we? So we're talking about a lot of waste in a couple of decades' time. So we are talking about waste, but we're also talking about a fantastic opportunity. Um, when we talk about waste electric vehicle batteries, um, we're not just talking of a waste that needs disposal. It does need treatment and handling, but we've got a fantastic opportunity to either remanufacture electric vehicle batteries into new electric vehicle batteries, to reuse them in other applications, um, for example, bolstering our grid and enabling the transition to more renewable energy sources, um, or potentially there will be some batteries that are faulty and have eventually reached the end of their life, and they will need recycling. But fortunately, um, we can anticipate this problem, develop the technologies and, and put measures in place in time. Get starting now. Let's start with what is in the electric vehicle battery, because that's it's itself an issue. How do they need to be treated? OK, so um, the key thing about electric vehicle batteries is that there are lots of really valuable critical materials in the battery. And, and there's a global race around the world by battery manufacturers to secure access to these materials. So... Um, the, the challenge that we've got is that some of these materials um, are, you know, that they're not um, divided equally around the world. They come from certain locations. The supply chains that those materials pass through, um, there's sometimes challenges around those in, in terms of sort of social and ethical problems in terms of how materials are mined and extracted, in terms of environmental problems that are caused through the mining and extraction. So we really want to make sure that we have good custody of those materials. And that's things like lithium, um, cobalt, nickel, um, graphite for the anode material in batteries. And we believe that it's possible to take batteries at the end of their life and, and develop processes that will enable us to recover as much of that material as possible to feed into the next generation of batteries. How, Gavin, because this is a huge issue with the push for EVs, is what it's going to mean for the mining, mining practices and sustainability of all those um, critical metals. So what is possible by means of recycling them? Yeah, OK, for sure. So in our paper in Nature, we review a wide variety of different approaches to recycling. Um, I think it starts with taking the battery out of the vehicle itself. And there, at the moment, this is something that's being done manually. And, and if you can imagine, there are lots of sort of hazards with taking a battery out of a vehicle, not least the fact that they're incredibly heavy. So there's considerations in terms of manual handling um, and, and workers removing that safely. But also you've got things like high voltages. If a vehicle's been involved in a crash or an accident, there could be damage to the battery that you don't know about. Um, there's the potential for sort of, you know, the chemistry inside the batteries to leak. Um, there can be some nasty um, chemicals formed by the electrolytes if they were to catch fire. There's high voltages present um, because of the number of batteries that are arrayed together. So in the paper, we advocate for the development of automated and robotic systems to enable the processing of batteries at scale. So first, removing them from the vehicles. Once you've isolated the battery from the vehicle, it's then about taking that pack apart and being able to diagnose what modules within the battery 
um, are good and what ones are bad. So if you think about a battery pack in an electric vehicle as being comprised of a number of modules, which is to say a number of batteries that are connected together in a, in a physical sort of box or component, and those components are then connected together. So we need to be able to take those modules, diagnose them, see if they're any good. And again, because of the scale of the um, battery sort of uh, challenge that we anticipate coming from electric vehicles, we think there's a case for more automation um, in this process. So once we've got the modules, we've sorted them out into different categories, and we might say that some of them are really good, and we might want to put those back into vehicles and maybe put them with other good modules with similar characteristics. Some of them will have faded a little bit. You know, they've had a good life. They've travelled lots of miles in a vehicle. Um, they're not quite at the level of performance that consumers would want for an electric vehicle, but we might be able to put them into a second life application. So that sort of thing is putting them in a, in a container or a warehouse somewhere, connecting them to the grid. And you can imagine then, you know, after a big football match or a sports game or something like that, everyone gets up from the sofa, um, they go to the fridge, open the fridge, take out a beer or maybe switch on the kettle um, and make a cup of tea. That creates a big surge on the grid and, and, and managers of um, our power grids will see these spikes after, you know, big programs and, and things that coordinate public behaviour. And there's a challenge there to manage those spikes and changes in demand. So the second life vehicle batteries that have already enjoyed a good life out on the road could be bolstering our power grids and also enabling greater potential renewable energy on the grid. And then at the end of the day, there are going to be some batteries that aren't suitable for any other application other than for making into the new batteries. And we review three different technologies. One's called pyrometallurgy, the other's called hydrometallurgy, and the other is called direct recycling, which offer different routes for the recycling of batteries than they really have reached the end of the road. What is going to be needed by means of infrastructure and a system for doing this? Because uh, one of your co-authors explained that electrification of just 2% of the current global car fleet would represent a line of cars that could stretch around the circumference of the earth, 140 million vehicles. So what you are flagging here is really, really important. But what will it take to set up, and who should be setting up, a system so that this process of recycling as much as you can just becomes the norm, part of the life cycle of purchasing and disposing of a vehicle? So I think one of the really positive things um, is that I, I know certainly speaking from the UK, you know, there's already an established network of vehicle recyclers who will take a vehicle at the end of its life. And at the moment, you know, that gets crushed, shredded, um, made into cubes, and then the metal is sent from recycling. So, so there are companies out there that currently recycle vehicles. And I think the difference between, say, consumer batteries and vehicle batteries is if you imagine the sort of batteries that we find in portable electronic devices, um, you know, loads of people have got a mobile phone in the back of a kitchen drawer that they don't use anymore. That, that waste is very diffuse and it's spread out, you know, small batteries that just get left in drawers. Whereas with vehicles, you know, they're, they're a substantial size and footprint. So when they reach the end of life, um, you can't just hide it in the back of the drawer. You have to do something sensible with it and, and send it to a scrapyard. Now, the challenge is, is that at the moment, that vehicle recycling industry, its processes and techniques for recycling vehicles um, consist of sort of depolluting the vehicle, taking all of the oil and the fluids out of the vehicle and then crushing it up. Now, you can't do that with an electric vehicle because, um, you know, there's potential risk around thermal events for the batteries. Um, and also there's a challenge around permanent magnet motors where the magnet material in the motor, when it gets crushed up, sticks to all of your machinery. It forms an abrasive um, which degrades the machinery very quickly. So for electric vehicles, we're going to need to do something different. I think that the vehicle recycling industry, as it is, will start to become aware of this challenge as more vehicles come through the system. And it's really just about thinking around what's the smart way 
to aggregate and process those batteries. You're talking so about the... um, eight gigafactories, though, in the UK by 2040, and I thought I heard you also referencing AI, which will hopefully be getting more and more sophisticated. But who's going to set up those gigafactories? Is that going to be um, a, a, an industry-led thing or something else? So I think, you know, some of this depends on what happens um, politically. So as, as you're probably aware at the moment, we've got an election in the UK. Um, we've got um, two different parties vying for, uh, well, you know, that's not just two different parties, but um, we've got the Conservatives and Labour with different approaches to how the vehicle industry might develop in the UK. Um, Labour, for example, have said that they would co-invest in the creation of um, electric vehicle manufacturing capacity with industry. Um, so I think, you know, there's going to be a mix of different investment. Industry itself already recognises the need to transition to um, vehicles with a, a greater degree of electrification. So some manufacturers will hedge their bets and, and use hybridisation as a stepping stone to full electrification. But, but we've seen these factories built around the world. Um, I think the challenge for countries that want to develop electric vehicle manufacturing capacity is thinking to themselves, where are the critical materials to feed those factories going to come from? Gavin, thank you. Gavin Harper, a Faraday Institution Research Fellow at the Relib Project at the University of Birmingham, which I think stands for uh, Recycling Lithium-Ion Batteries, Relib.